Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, and today I am going to go over 2.04, Neutrons and Isotopes. Have your notes ready. Some discoveries happen because of math as well as experiments. Many discoveries build on previous experiments. James Chadwick discovered neutrons based on all of the above. So in your notes, make sure you write this down, that yes, discoveries happen because of experiments, but they can also happen because of the math, and that's part of why math is so important in chemistry. James Chadwick discovered the neutron. You do need to know his name, Chadwick, discovered the neutron, and he did it based on other people's experiments, doing his own experiments, and simply looking at the math. All right, you do not need to write any of this down. In 1920, Ernest Rutherford, so we talked about him already. Remember what he discovered? He discovered he used the gold foil and he shot the, posit the positive alpha particles through it. And when they hit the positive nucleus, what happens when two positives come together? They repel each other, so they bounce straight back at him. Okay, so he figured that out, but he realized that there were definitely some issues with the mass because protons weigh how many AMU? One, and electrons weigh how many AMUs? Zero. And so Chadwick goes assigned with where do we got all this extra weight from? Where is this extra mass coming down from? You do not have to write any of this down, by the way. So in the 30s, then they discovered that beryllium when, again, they bombarded with alpha particles, they shot all these positives at it, that they had radiation. And at first they thought it was gamma. Gamma is a type of radiation, um, a type of electromagnetic wave. Like there's microwaves, infrared rays, ultraviolet rays. Well, gamma is another type of ray or wave. But they realized that no, something else was going on, and in fact that it was neutral. And because it was neutral, we had a bunch of other stuff going on, and so there were other scientists that came in. They used a Geiger counter, so an example of something that had been previously discovered. And so here it's a couple years later, and Chadwick proposed this particle was Rutherford's neutron. He actually won a Nobel Prize for his discovery. Now, here's where the math comes in. He was using some of the math and momentum to figure out that the mass of the neutron was exactly the same as the proton. And so if we look at this, it looks kind of confusing, but I bet you know what most of this is. 4, 2, alpha particle, 9, 4, be, 12, 6, c. Oh, this one probably looks familiar. Carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of 6, a mass number of 12. Beryllium has an atomic number of 4, a mass number of 9. So the alpha particle, this swishy fish looking thing stands for the Greek letter alpha, has an atomic number of two, a mass number of four, two plus four equals six, four plus nine equals what? Thirteen, and look on the other side of the equation, twelve from carbon and one from the neutron gives me thirteen. So I have the same amount before and after, and that's part of how they figured out that a neutron is one AMU. Now, it wasn't this easy when he first did it, because if you're thinking, well, yeah, who couldn't figure that out? There's a lot more to it than that, okay? <laughs> In fact, another scientist, Polly, who has the Pauli exclusion principle, um, talked about another invisible particle that's taking care of some of that momentum and energy, and so he named the neutrino, which you don't have to worry about right now. But here you can see is another equation they used. So it's not only the actual experiments, but it's doing the math two that really helps figure out all of what's going on in chemistry. Now neutrons don't have a charge, so if they don't have a charge, why are they important? Well, when we talked about protons having what charge? Positive, and if two positives come together, they do what? They repel. Electrons have what charge? Negative, and if two electrons come together, they repel. If you have a positive and negative, they do what? They attract, and that's a huge part on how chemical reactions happen, which is most of the semester. But neutrons don't have a charge, so why are they important? Well, neutrons have a mass of 1 AMU. Having more neutrons will make the atom blank than other regular atoms of that same element. Well, if each neutron weighs 1 AMU and I have more of them, it's going to make them, oops, heavier. 
or more massive. So make sure you write this down in your notes, especially this sentence. So having more neutrons will make the atom more massive. Obviously, if you have less neutrons, then the atom is lighter. Another reason why they're important, having too many or not enough neutrons can cause atoms to be unstable. And we're going to talk a lot more about this in a different unit, about nuclear chemistry. But unstable atoms can decay. So the nucleus breaks apart into other elements. And that's enough for now. Um, but it really doesn't happen very often. But it can be a side effect of having the neutrons. So it is important to know about it. Isotopes. A very important vocabulary word. Write it down. Isotopes equals atoms of the same element that have more or less neutrons. However, they all have the same what? Look at these examples. These are each isotopes of hydrogen. So they all have different numbers of neutrons, but they all have the same what? They all have the same number of protons, and it's the proton that determines what element it is. So let's look at these three different atoms, these three different isotopes of hydrogen. So what is the atomic number of this one? Well, the atomic number is the number of protons, so it's one. What about this deuteridium? That atom. It's still hydrogen. What's the atomic number? One. What about this one? Tritium. What's the atomic number? One. It's always one because it's hydrogen. Anytime your atomic number is one, it's hydrogen. And these are all hydrogen. Now, what about the mass number? What's the mass number of this one? Well, I just have one proton, so it's one. Here I have one proton plus one neutron equals two. AMU if I want to be specific. And what's the mass of our last one here? One proton plus two neutrons equals three AMU. All right, so let's do another example. So I would like you to please hit the pause button. And if you want to just scratch it down in your notes or just write yourself a little, you know, trying it now, that's fine. But I would like you to hit pause and try and fill all this out on your own to make sure that you have it. If you're looking at this going, okay, wait a minute, how do I know what's what? Okay, if you think you know, hit pause and go ahead. The first thing I'm going to start out with, what are these things going around in orbitals? Those are the electrons. All right. So how many electrons do I have in my first one? I have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, shoot. I, I must have cropped one off when I was doing it. There should be six. Five, but we should put should be six. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So how many electrons in this one? Two, four, six. And in the last one, six. All right. Now we have different colors in the inside. We have one, two, three, four, five, six orange. And let's look over here. One, two, three, four, five, six orange. One, two, three, four, five, six orange. So each of these have six orange. So what do you think the oranges represent in this one? Are they the protons or the neutrons? Well, this whole lesson is about isotopes. So isotopes means they have the same number of what? Protons, different numbers of neutrons. So all of these have six protons, which means what element is this? Look it up. It is carbon. I know that because anytime I have six protons, I have carbon. Great. So how many neutrons in our first one? One, two, three, four, five, six. How about this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the last one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have three isotopes of carbon. The atomic number of all carbon atoms is always what? Six, because it's the number of protons. The mass number. How do I get the mass number? Protons weigh how much? One AMU. Electrons weigh how much? Zero AMU. Neutrons weigh how much? One AMU. So what do I add up to get it? The total mass? I add the protons plus the neutrons. So 6 plus 6 is 12. 6 plus 7, 13. 6 plus 8 is 14. 
all isotopes are the same element, so they have the same number of protons, the same atomic number. Electrons can change. Right now, we're going to start out with all of them being the same. Um, in the next couple lessons, we'll talk about electrons changing. Mass numbers will be different for different isotopes of the same element. All right, so again, make sure that if you didn't do well on this, maybe go back to the blank screen and try it again. And make sure that you have, especially the definition of isotopes in your notebook. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, go ahead to the worksheet, and then when you're ready, the quiz.